Hey there folks and welcome back. Today we're continuing with our discussion on the chain rule. In particular, we're going to be generalizing a result that you saw at the end of last week, the chain rule for paths. As a quick reminder, we use the chain rule for paths when dealing with a function z of multiple variables, say x and y. And those variables in turn depend on a third variable, say t. We can model this situation with one of these tree diagrams. Our big function is shown at the top, the intermediate variables x and y are in the middle, and the independent variable t is at the bottom. Looking at the diagram, you can see that z really depends on t, right? t changes x and y, which in turn change z. So if z depends on t, we could ask for the derivative of z with respect to t. The chain rule for paths gives us an efficient way to find it, and it makes use of this diagram. We start by following every branch of the tree that leads us from z down to t. As we move down a branch, we take derivatives and multiply them. So moving down this left branch, we start by taking the partial derivative of z with respect to x. It's a partial derivative, right? Because at this level, we have two variables, x and y. Next, we're going to multiply this by the derivative of x with respect to t. This is a total derivative because x only depends on one variable. Next, we follow the branch on the right. When we switch branches, we add the results. So here, we're going to add partial z by partial y times dy by dt. And there you go, a nice, efficient way to compute the derivative of z with respect to t. But what happens if z depends on more intermediate variables? What if our intermediate variables depend on more than one independent variable? We're going to explore these situations in this video, but if you've understood this tree diagram, you're already 90% of the way there. All right, I'm going to introduce the general multivariable chain rule by way of examples. So suppose first that we have a function z that depends on variables x and y, but now x and y each depend on two independent variables s and t. Again, we can model this situation with a tree diagram. The big function z is at the top, the intermediate variables x and y are at level 2, and then at the bottom we have our independent variables. x depends on both s and t, y depends on both s and t. In this question, we're looking for the partial derivative of z with respect to t. It has to be a partial derivative this time, right? Because ultimately, z depends on two independent variables. Just like before, we follow every branch that leads from z down to the variable in question, in this case, t we can ignore branches that lead to other independent variables. So here, we don't have to remember any complicated formulas. We follow the branches, multiply the derivatives, and add the results. So in this case, our partial derivative is equal to partial z over partial x times partial x over partial t plus partial z over partial y times partial y over partial t. And there you go, folks. It really is that simple. What if instead we had a function w that depended on three variables x, y, and z, and each of these variables depended on two independent variables s and t? Well, no tricks here, folks. We do it in exactly the same way. Start with the tree diagram. w is at the top, x, y, and z are at level 2, and s and t are at the bottom. Each variable depends on s and t. Now in this question, we're looking for the partial derivative of w with respect to s. Hey, well, we're going to do exactly the same thing we did before. We follow every branch of our tree that leads from w to s, taking derivatives as we go. When we switch branches, we add the result. So here, I'm going to get partial w by partial x, partial x by partial s, plus partial w by partial y, partial y by partial s, plus partial w by partial z, partial z by partial s. Whew, okay, lots of partials, but we didn't have to remember any formula. The tree diagram told us how to find the derivative. You may also run into the situation where your intermediate variables each depend on a different number of independent variables. Take this example. z depends on x and y, x depends on r and s, whereas y only depends on r, and r in turn depends on t. Oh, looks complicated, but have no fear. We can approach it in exactly the same way, with a diagram. z is at the top, x and y are in the middle, 
x depends on r and s, so we have two branches here, whereas y just depends on r. And finally, r depends on t, so we have a t here and a t here. In this question, we're looking for the partial derivatives of z with respect to s and t. So let's start with s. We follow every branch from z to s, right? And I think we only have one, this branch right here. My partial derivative is therefore partial z by partial x, partial x by partial s. We can compute our partial with respect to t in much the same way, except now we have two branches. We have this branch on the left and another branch on the right. My derivative is then given by partial z by partial x, partial x by partial r, and then dr by dt, right? r only depends on t. From the second branch, we get partial z by partial y, dy by dr, again, y only depends on the one variable, times dr by dt. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Now you might be wondering, hey, Zach, why did we compute a partial derivative of z with respect to t? I only see one independent variable at the bottom. Well, that's true, but don't forget about s. S stops at level two, but it's the last variable in a particular branch. So z depends on both s and t. Here's an interesting example to wrap up our lesson. We want to show that for any function f that depends on x minus y, y minus z, and z minus x, this partial differential equation will be satisfied. Partial f by partial x plus partial f by partial y plus partial f by partial z is equal to zero. If you want a concrete example of such a function, how about something like this? The function x minus y times y minus z times e to the z minus x. As an exercise, show that this function satisfies this equation. Uh, but in this question, we want to show that this will work for any such function. It sounds like a hard problem, but really it's just a chain rule question. If you think about it, f depends on this quantity, which maybe we'll call u, this quantity, which maybe we'll call v, and this quantity, which maybe we'll call w. Here, u depends on both x and y, v depends on both y and z, and w depends on both x and z. Here, u, v, and w are our intermediate variables. They're these expressions involving x, y, and z, which are our independent variables. We're interested in computing these partial derivatives of f with respect to the independent variables x, y, and z. And we can probably do this using a tree diagram. So let's write this down. We're going to let u be x minus y, v be y minus z, and w be z minus x. Our tree diagram then looks something like this. The function f is at the top, u, v, and w are at level 2, u depends on x and y, v depends on y and z, and w depends on x and z. We need to compute the expression partial f by partial x plus partial f by partial y plus partial f by partial z. We'll start with the partial with respect to x. We follow the branches down, taking derivatives as we go. We get partial f over partial u, partial u over partial x, plus partial f over partial w, partial w over partial x. Next up is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Again, we have two branches. We get partial f over partial u, partial u over partial y, plus partial f over partial v, partial v over partial y. Finally, we take the partial derivative with respect to z. This is going to give us partial f over partial v, partial v over partial z, plus partial f over partial w, partial w over partial z. Oh my goodness, okay, this looks even more complicated than what we started with. But if you think for a second, you'll realize that we can actually compute some of these partial derivatives because we have specific relations between u, v, w, and x, y, z. Take, for example, this relation, u equals x minus v. This will allow us to compute partial u over partial x and partial u over partial y. Partial u over partial x is simply going to be 1, right? and partial u over partial y is minus 1. Likewise, partial v over partial y is 1, and partial v over partial z is minus 1. Finally, partial w over partial x is minus 1, 
and partial w over partial z is 1. Substituting these values, we get partial f over partial u minus partial f over partial w minus partial f over partial u plus partial f over partial v minus partial f over partial v plus partial f over partial w. And now something magical happens. Every single term cancels out, and we're left with, you guessed it, zero.